Now, are you a people pleaser who struggles to say no? Well, podcaster Natalie Lou certainly did until a health scare changed that. Now she's released a new book, uh, The Joy of Saying No, and she joins me now. A very good morning to you. Um, the idea of saying no and empowerment in that way has been around for a while, but clearly we're just not getting into the groove of saying no often enough, in your opinion. Yeah, I think we have been socialised and conditioned to believe that no is a dirty word and that saying yes makes you a good person or that it leads to you being successful. But our lives have changed dramatically over, I mean, even just the last few years, in particular with the pandemic, but even over the last few decades. And our work commitments and our family commitments and the pressures that we put on ourselves, okay. it all adds up. And if we aren't saying yet no when we really need, want to and should, then we wind up saying it resentfully and fearfully and avoidantly, but we also end up with health issues and we end up feeling angry and stressed. And, and is that what you experienced in your life? Yeah, I mean, I, I grew up being you know, the quintessential people pleaser and so I overworked and I went out with emotionally unavailable men and I was, yes, 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 I wanted to please everybody because deep down I didn't really like and love myself. And then when I had my health issue, I had sarcoidosis, an immune system disease, it forced me to have to really draw a line in the sand and say no because I was fighting for my life. Incredible, isn't it? So you've got... Um... Is it five types of people, please? And I'm wondering whether at home people will recognise themselves in any of these. Talk us through them. So there's gooding is the first one, which is where if you're very concerned about looking good to others, yes. about being good, you know, you might think, I have to be a good employee or the perfect wife, mm. or you worry about not being liked, you're likely to be in that sort of gooding category. Yes. Then there's efforting, which is where I fall in, which is if you're all about effort, giving 100%, being the best, being a perfectionist, overdoing it, everything, you try to please people with your efforts, yes. like doing things for others. I'm ticking people off in my family and friends as we go along. <laughs> like, that's, that's that person, right? That's that person. You're know, trying on, to yeah, excel. The next one. And then avoiding, you know, avoiding is trying to please others by trying to never discomfort them. So you are very good at avoiding conflict. You'll avoid doing anything that is going to put people out. And it will also include never talking about the thing that you think is going to upset others if you bring it up. Oh. Saving, a lot of people will identify with, are the, the helpers, the fixers, the savers, the rescuers mm. of this world. They pride themselves on giving, but they give without boundaries, so they end up sacrificing themselves and overdoing it. And then the last one are, is the suffering. So if you have this sense of feeling like mm. the more you suffer, mm. the better it makes you as a person. Oh, yes, I know exactly who and that is in my family. You keep tolerating, mm. you know, for instance, people overstepping your boundaries. It's because you're trying to please them through suffering. And the thing is, though, when you have been any of these types of person, which I think we can all identify with on, on some level, um, when you do start saying no, <laughs> people do, do react badly around you don't they? Because you've always been that person. And now, who do you think you are? Yeah, some people really get used Your to Your parent, you. you know, if you've yeah. got, you know, oh, mum yeah. can be often the worst critic. You know, they, you start saying no and it's like, well, what's that about then? Yeah, and, it's, and they say that you're being disrespectful. Right. Or, or so there is quite a lot at stake in saying no. Oh, yes, there can be. I think in the sense of that people get used to you, like, saying yes all the time. And then, of course, they kind of go, oh, I can't mm. believe that. And then... They think it's maybe an anomaly, so you have to be consistent with your no yeah. and be authentic about it so that they understand where you're coming from. So that, those are your you've got three tips. Is that, have you given us those three tips? Well, I think my, the first would be to recognise the people-pleaser feelings, which are guilt, resentment, overwhelm, anxiety, feeling overloaded, the helplessness, the powerlessness. These are signs, you know, along with resentment, actually, that you've said yes to something, which for all intents and purposes might be a good thing, but it's for the wrong reasons. Those feelings are letting you know that you're people-pleasing and that you need to say no somewhere along the line. I would also recommend as well that don't try to do everything. Mm -hmm. Pick something. Not Like, some people are like, oh, I need to learn to say no. And then the following day, they're just like, like no, 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 no. And of course, when people kind of go, oh, they think, oh, well, no is really bad. 
pick something. Don't go for the biggest thing necessarily, but start gently and recognize where the sky isn't falling down when you turn yes. around and say no. So that you get a more realistic perspective on what saying no involves. Yes. And then I think the other thing is to look out for where you say yes when you really mean no. And you can often see this in the thought process afterwards. So outwardly, you're like, yeah, sure, no problem, I'll do that. Inwardly, you're going, I can't believe they've asked me to do that. Don't they realise how busy I yes, am? Yes, Or you're right. raging at yourself. Notice and where And also you take that up. into your family life. So it eats away in your evenings. It yes. eats away your thinking time at bedtime. Yeah. It affects absolutely. everything. It does. You take it because what you don't say no to with others, you end up taking it out on, for instance, your family or your friends. Right. And is there something about baggage as well? I think you talk about reclaiming your baggage, is that right? Just yeah, briefly. So, yeah. yeah, it's recognising where your baggage is showing up. So in those instances where you recognise that you have been people-pleasing, it's asking that question, what's the baggage behind this? Where else have I felt, thought and acted similarly? And often when I talk to people... You're opening a can of worms there. It reminds them of... The situation reminds them of their mum or their dad or somebody else yes. in their family or somebody from school. And then you can realise, oh, hold on, I'm a grown-up now. I can actually choose a different path. Oh, well, I think everybody needs to read this book, don't they, <laughs> on some level? <laughs> Natalie, thank you so much for saying yes to coming to talk to us this morning. Oh. Uh, the joy of saying na uh, no, not now, the <laughs> complete opposite. <laughs> See, I'm, not, I'm so indoctrinated into saying yes, I can't even say the word no. Uh, the joy of saying no is out now, thank you so much. And uh, Jack, our floor manager, don't worry about that coffee, it's fine. You can say no, it's all right. <laughs> um, thank you so much.